love one, this is Taki from PigHeadTalker.com and welcome to PhD Studios. I'm here to do a unboxing. It's more of a first impressions of the new Fujifilm XF10. And there is no coincidence why I have the X70 with me because a lot of people will compare the new XF10 to the X70, but I have a plethora of Fujifilm cameras behind me. Kind of explain to you where this camera will fit within this ecosystem, and then sort of my first thoughts, and then eventually I'll get out and shooting, I'll do a more of a long-term review. So let's start the first impressions, well, the unboxing first, and then in first impressions now. I, I don't know why I have sunglasses on. So here we are, the XF10. Now, first of all, uh, thank you, Mark from Fujifilm Canada for shipping this out to me. I think there's only two in Canada, and this is his personal copy, which he said I can do an unboxing. But just, this is a, a, a pre-production model, so uh, the box will probably be exactly the way it is when you get it, but the camera itself is pre-production, so he wanted me to make sure that, that I say that. Because fit and finish, it looks pretty darn close to, to, to finish, but. Anyways, here, here we are here. This is not gonna be a full proper unboxing just because this is not, um, this is not production ready yet. But full manual, which I did take a kind of a quick sneak peek at before. So this to me is actually more important than the camera itself in terms of looking up specs because Fujifilm only releases what they want the media to see, but this kind of tells you where this camera fits in. So we'll, we'll look at this later, full manual. And let's look inside the box here. Um, so there is a, a, a USB, uh, micro USB connector. So this is basically how you're gonna charge, charge the camera. I don't know how else you're gonna charge it. So you have this, and then you have the little, oh I see, so you, you plug this into this, and then you'll get your different, um, plugins for depending on what country. So this is pretty much the only accessory you get and and maybe like a, a you get a you get a oh, you get a wrist strap which is already kind of starting to give you an idea of oh it's actually not a bad one. It's it's not leather. I think it's pleather, but it reminds me of the what you got with the X70 right here. So you got a wrist strap. So you have an idea of now how this is going to connect and inside the box, I mean that's that's pretty much it. So there's nothing else in here. So let's just throw the box out and let's look at the camera. Let, let's talk first about the size. This is tiny. This, you can't, this is, this, this is definitely Rico GR territory. The X70, I have it all gussied up here with the optical viewfinder. I have the half case. I have the lens hood. So it is very modular. It's not a systems camera, but it kind of is because you did get the optional uh, ultra wide converter, but um, this was never fully pocketable. You couldn't really put this in your pocket unless you had a really large pocket. This, you, you can. Uh, you don't get the articulating screen that's on the X70 and it doesn't have shutter speed dial. This is, this is, it's similar to the X70, but I don't think it's a replacement of the X70. Although I'm a bit worried that there won't be an X80. But uh, the fact that it's called the XF10, a lot of you guys won't know this, but um, there was a camera called the XF1, which was a two-thirds size sensor point and shoot, which had the same sensor processor as the original X10. Then there's the X20, the X30, and then because of the competition of the uh, of the Sony RX series and the Canon GX series, they kind of like discontinued it because it was really hard to compete. And so the XF1, and then the, they have the Q series. So uh, just one second. This is the XQ2, and this was kind of the replacement of the XF1. Same two-third sensor, they upped the processor to the X-Trans 2, I think. So it was a, actually a pretty powerful little point and shoot, but the sensor was too small. Again, it was two-thirds, and this is clearly bigger than the XQ2, but it, it's not that much bigger. So this XF10 is sort of kind of a replacement of this that came from the original XF1. So that's kind of the, the, the lineage of the XF10. It's definitely not an X7 replacement. 
I'm not really happy about this 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 the way the lens hood is. I wish they created um, a built-in sort of a the flower type that the Ricos all the, all the Ricos have. Let's just try to. There you go. See how the, the lens just kind of pops out. The, the Sony's have them. The Canons have them. Uh, but I think in terms of design, they did it so that they would keep this as flat because that lens, that lens is very, can you see that? It's very flat. And when you put on this lens hood, if you can see the, 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 the inside of the hood, it's actually grasping just the middle, just a little, the middle section of that. So someone might create kind of a tiny, can you see that? Can you see how, how little of the, cap is actually catching it's just that it's just that little that just that little front section there and so um there might be some third party kind of um, attachments to that so very small so that part of it is amazing and let's just um for comparison for comparison let's compare it with the rico gr i don't have the gr2 I have the original GR with the APS-C size sensor. And in fact, let's just, um... wow, does that turn on? Wow, when this turns on, look at that. That's how much the lens sticks out. It sticks out, like it sticks out, or something like the Ricoh GR. It's flat, it has the enclosed, built-in um, lens hood. When you turn on, the lens does stick out about half inch and so that's kind of the difference already between the Ricoh GR and the XF10 that it's it's a lot more compact but if you look at the size they're about the same size in fact I could probably grab this uh, XF10 and put it straight inside the Ricoh GR case can I uh, it's a bit tight but it does it does fit so in terms of thickness it's slightly thicker and I think it has to do with this cap. If this cap wasn't here, yeah, see, it's, it's, this, it's this lens cap that's keeping it thick. So if you have a, uh, mm, I don't know if I'm gonna go without the cap, but it does look pretty silly having this thing kind of, you know, if you're used to Apple products, I guess you're used to dongles, but I kind of don't want a dongle. Kind of don't want a dongle on my camera. Uh, and that's kind of what this lens would remind you of. But there is a single lug, a strap lug right there. So the idea of this is they don't want this around your neck, although you can get a strap that attaches onto a single point and have this around your neck. But really they want this as a wrist strap type camera. And if you look at the, the X70, the X70 does have the double strap lugs here. And this was meant to kind of carry around your neck. So, but wow, look at that. It's as if Fujifilm got the Ricoh GR and they made sure that this XF10 would be exactly the same size. It's slightly taller. It's slightly taller, although it's slightly narrower. And again, with the lens turned on, I mean, with the camera turned on, the lens on the XF10 is definitely flatter. Now I'm wondering if this uh, 18 if this 18.5 millimeter lens is exact same one on the X70, I think it is. It has the same kind of goofy. It sounds very similar. Let me just. It's, it's probably the same lens that's on the X70 that's on the new XF10. So let's kind of go through the, the features of both of these and see like, I know there's a lot of X70 shooters that are thinking of maybe upgrading depending on why you have the X70 and why you like it. There may be some reasons why you would. And the number one reason why you would upgrade from the X70 to this is the sensor, but not the processor, although you do get classic chrome on this, but also the compact size. If you were a Fujifilm X70 uh, shooter, but you always looked at the Ricoh GR hoping that it was as small and compact, this pretty much does the job. You can fit this inside a, let's just see here. I can't move my camera, but it's definitely, you can, you can, you can definitely, it'll definitely fit inside your, your pocket and your pants. This, this, that's how small this is. The X70 never really got that small. It was compact, but 
not as compact as this. And really, as I had shown, um, if you look at if you look at the XQ2 and and also the Rico GRD4, it's it's only slightly larger. And this this Rico GRD4 had a one over 1.7 inch sensor, and so the difference of like five years, uh, five to six years of camera design, you can see that. Uh, Fujifilm sort of miraculously were able to shove in a APS-C size sensor into a camera this small. And I think that's probably the, the greatest feat that they've done with this um, XF10. Now going back to the X70, uh, a few other differences of course is the articulating screen. This does articulate fully up for selfies. You can sort of, I, I kind of like these articulating screens that don't flip out if you're using like a waist level finder because it keeps you narrower as you're walking and you're shooting. You know, if it flips out sideways like the, the um, G5X, uh, it makes you a bit wider and it's nice that it's this way here. It keeps you thinner. And so if you like shooting down low like that, you just can't do this with the XF10 because there is no articulating screen. Another thing is there is no, there is a flash, but there is no flash hot shoe, which to me is kind of, is a big deal for me because I do a lot of daylight flash because this is a, a, uh, a leaf shutter lens, so you can flash sync up to top shutter speed of probably one four thousandths on this, and you, you're forced to use the built-in flash. And so that, that mm, for me, it's a big deal. And as well, you can't put accessory, um, uh, items like an optical viewfinder, you can put a microphone and you could put a flash on here. This one you can't, although you do have the microphone input here, but there's there's nothing to mount it on unless you get like kind of a, a bracket system for this. So you can't shoot video with this up to, it says 4K, but it's 15 frames per second, so don't bother. It does do 1080p at 59.94 frames, so like 60 frames per second, you can do that with this. And there is some high speed uh, video frames, uh, uh, FPS, but it's only at 720, so um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd say stick to 1080, 60 frames per second with digital stabilization, which I don't really know if that works well or not. So um, that's another big difference between the X70 and the uh, XF10. So those are kind of the negatives. Um, one and another negative is uh, there is no there is no usable at least I can see front filter thread. So this one here you can add this on here. You can move the front cap and you can put filters on here. It had the ultra wide adapter which I have here, so you can make this into a 21. So it becomes like an XF14 or 21 millimeter equivalent focal length point and shoot. So this is a very versatile all-in-one camera with tons of accessories that Fujifilm had come out with. And so it'll be a shame for Fujifilm to not replace the X70 with an X80. So Fujifilm, please make an X80, please. But saying all that, this is super compact. So let's kind of go over the pluses that this has over the X70. So a lot of people, as I mentioned, are gonna compare these two because of size and sort of form factor. Uh, this is definitely more compact than the X70. But really, in terms of technology, the XF10 is actually a closer match to the new X-T100, which is sort of a sister camera to the X, uh, the X-A series, the X-A5. And so it has the same sensor, the Bayer filter, uh, Bayer color filter array sensor with out a AA uh, uh, without an AA filter, the anti-aliasing filter on top. So, and also they both have 24 megapixels. It has the same uh, no-name processor in here. So, uh, it has the same uh, film simulation. So, there's no acros in in either of these cameras. It has the black and white, but no acros. But I would say these two are probably more comparable in terms of the technology. These two here. In terms of the back control, the XF10 reminds me a lot of the, of my, it's one of my favorite cameras, is the, the XE3 for compact, uh, all day carry, APS-C, interchangeable lens cameras. I love the XE3. And if you look at the back, it has the same sort of idea of a joystick with touch screen and swipe control. So this also has a joystick. Um, with swipe control, which was the first one to do that, to get rid of the D-pad and to utilize swipe control. So this has that. So in terms of shooting style, 
uh, in terms of how the, the UI and how you interact with the camera, if you're used to the X-E3, you'll get used to the X-F10 very quickly. And I actually did find the swipe control more functional than I thought it would be. Another thing between uh, this two that I think you, the, you either you'll, you'll love or you hate is that the X-F10 has three dials that are all customizable to a certain degree. So this front rotating dial, uh, there's a dial around the shutter uh, shutter button here, and there's a rear one as well. Now with the X70, you had to the rear dial here was a dedicated exposure compensation. The next dial was a shutter speed dial, and then you had the ring on the outside. Then you had to count on a lot of function buttons to access certain things. But and also there's a weird rear toggle that also is on the uh, Ricoh GR. Now this doesn't have that. It has a it has the joystick or the, they call it the AF lever, just call it a joystick Fujifilm. It has a joystick and it has uh, one, two, it has two customizable buttons, but it has three dials that you can customize to a certain degree. So really, uh, in terms of control, I actually think this has a pretty decent uh, ability to customize to the way that you shoot and how you want to access some of these features. So I actually, I haven't set it up yet to, to, to what I want it to do, but I, I think that um, if you like customization, this is it. You don't have to be forced for it to be a exposure compensation because if you're primarily a manual shooter or, or whatever you, you do and you don't use exposure compensation, then you could just change this to whatever you want. So I think that's actually pretty fantastic. There is two new features that is pretty sweet, is it has a snap focus mode, which is something that uh, that Rico has always had ever since the film Rico GR1. So you have snap and you have the choice of either five meters or two meters. Now for me, two meters is just uh, over six feet and five meters is um, like 15 feet, that's quite far out. So for a street shooter, you probably set it for two meters. If you stopped on F8, and you can use it to access it using one of the custom functions. And we'll pick the top one here. And here, let's just see if it allows me to pick snap. Snap. So you can pick snap in the FN button. So if I choose this, every time I press this, snap on, snap off. And it scrolls through off, on, five meter, two meter. So if I leave it at two meter, that's where I want it, and then I'll snap off. And then when I want it, I turn it on. I gotta press it twice, you have to scroll through it, which is not great, but I like two meters. So now whenever I wanna access snap, I just press that. Now it's in snap mode. It'll always stay in snap mode. So that's actually pretty neat. It has all the things that you would expect. It has the latest Bluetooth, always connect. I think it's always connect. Yeah, so those, those are the main features. There, there, are, are, there are other features that I may have missed, but those are the ones that I care about. Let's kind of do my quick final thoughts on the new XF10. And, uh, although people will probably quickly try to compare the XF10 to the X70, I would say very different other than if you want a compact point and shoot and you want to stay within the Fujifilm ecosystem, this is very compact. This is pocketable. In terms of uh, amongst other brands, it's, it's it's really trying to compete with the, the Ricoh GR2, the original GR. Uh, Price-wise, I don't know where it is. It's probably quite similar. Ricoh might be a little bit more expensive. Ricoh is more modular because it has the, the, the wide lens adapter. It has a flash hot shoe. But if you want an APS-C size sensor point and shoot camera that fits in your pocket, uh, the XF10, Fujifilm has finally done it. And I would say between these two, these are the two smallest point and shoots that have a sensor uh, of of that size. And so because of that, I am impressed what Fujifilm was able to do with this, even though it's not a replacement of this camera. And as I mentioned before, I do look forward to a replacement of the XF70, hopefully called the X80, and then all the accessories and stuff, hopefully, including the ultra wide angle lens adapter will work. This camera is not very modular. I looked through the, the manual, and in terms of accessories, I was looking for things like half cases or, or anything kind of cool, and all it is is uh, like a battery strap, uh, the charging cable, and that's pretty much it. There is, at this point, there is no major accessories um, from Fujifilm for this camera and probably you can order this cap separately, but this is not meant to be expanded. Uh, this is kind of meant to be an all-in-one and you, you should just kind of be happy with what they give you. As well, in terms of IQ, um, 
because it has the same sensor and processor with the XT100 and the XA5, you're gonna get similar results other than the fact that this is using probably the X70 lens, and so that's the only thing. Um, it wasn't the sharpest lens in the world. It's not a horrible lens, but because it's so pancake and so small, I understand the compromise. I mean, this is the camera turned on, guys. That's how far out the lens sticks out when the camera's turned on, which is amazing. And so um, uh, I think Fujifilm's done, made a pretty good compromise, but for those of you who want to know like image quality between this and the X70, it's gonna be quite different because even though they share the same lens, uh, the X70 has a 16 uh, megapixel processor, it's X-Trans, so it's a non-Bayer type color filter array, as well as using the older processor. So um, what I'm gonna do really is try to compare this to the latest 24 megapixel sensor API but with the X processor pro and so so in terms of an IQ test I think what I'm gonna do is actually put the 28 millimeter uh, equivalent adapter on the X100 so you're gonna get similar field of view between these two cameras minusing the optical quality of of this camera with this adapter versus this lens here both of me shooting a 24 pic 24 megapixel, but the sensor is different and the processor is different. So if I'm gonna do a comparison, I think maybe in terms of IQ, this is probably the most level playing field uh, comparison I can do. Although if you're looking for this sensor processor against an interchangeable lens uh, Fujifilm camera, I did do one when the X-T100 came out against the X-H1 using the same XF35 F2 lens, and I'll, I'll put the link down below just so you can see the difference between a Bayer and a non-Bayer sensor uh, within the Fujifilm ecosystem, but as well using different sensors. So those of you that care about IQ, this is probably the way I'm gonna shoot it as fairly as possible because I don't think it's fair to compare this with the X70 um, because of the difference in the, the sensor uh, megapixel rate. So that's my, my first impressions which I haven't even taken a single shot with this, but I have a pretty good idea uh, of what I'm gonna get out of this camera and the images will be fantastic. Video, that's another thing. I think video is where this is gonna suffer the most, but I don't think anyone buying this really cares about video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, look for a long term, not really a long term, but look for me to get an actual production copy from Fujifilm. Again, thank you Mark for sending this out to me so quickly and uh, allow me to make this uh, video and get it to you guys as soon as possible. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching and happy shooting. Peace.